This video is going to be my first look review of the 2016 Giant Trance Advanced 2751. That is a mouthful. This is the bike, and on paper, this has the potential of being the best trail bike that I've ever ridden. I absolutely loved my 2014 Trans Aluminum, and that one, the only thing I did was uh, change out the wheels for a set of Stan's Flow wheels. Other than that, I kept it stock, and I love that bike, but I got a pair of carbon wheels, uh, the Stan's Valors, for my Anthem a little while ago, and quickly became addicted to the precision and ride characteristics of the carbon wheels, which made me want to get a pair of carbon wheels for my Trance. And I said, well, if I want to do that, I might as well go ahead and upgrade the frame to a 2016 model. If I do that, I need to get a new fork. It would be nice to get a 34 millimeter stanchion Fox fork for it. Then I just decided it's going to be better just to sell the whole bike and start new with a brand new bike. And so here we are with the 2016 Trance. So uh, I will go over my first thoughts of the bike. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm weighing the bike in without pedals and it comes in at 26.86 and I still have the tubes in so I'm going to pull the tubes out set it up as tubeless and of course put the pedals on so with the bike fully built and with pedals with the tubes out and uh, just replace the grips uh, the bike comes in at 27.48 which is over two pounds lighter than my 2014 Trance with the flow wheels so here's the bike, and as someone who loves Fox suspension and Shimano, this bike really is a dream build. If I had to go out and build a bike, I would pretty much stock it the way it comes from Giant. So I really appreciate the build on this bike. The only uh, hesitation or uncertainty I had at first was the wheels. Um, I've been using Stan's wheels, and now that I've uh, used their carbon wheels, I absolutely love the Stan's uh, carbon wheels. And I wasn't sure about these, uh, mainly in terms of how well they would do as tubeless. But let me show you some video that I shot when I was building up the bike. All right, I'm setting these wheels up as tubeless, and I just wanted to show you all that it comes with just a standard rim strip to use with tubes. So I took the tire off, pulled the tube out, and pulled this rim strip off. And um, this is the blue tape that comes with the bike, and this is... Uh, the valve stem uh, and these are pretty nice valve stems and I think they're DT Swiss uh, but I did two layers of tape I like doing two layers and I don't know if I'm gonna have enough I don't think so this is the roll of tape so I'm gonna do the back wheel it looks like I may only get one layer on the back um, but we'll see I'll let you know all right I'm gonna see how these things air up as tubeless this was one of my main hesitations <laughs> with these rims uh, so we'll see I, I've got my stand solution and tire on and sprayed some soap bubbles between the bead of the tire and the rim. And let's see how this goes. Nice. Sounds just like a stands rim. Sweet, that was easy. Okay, so, so far so good on these wheels. No leaks at all. Rock on. And if you wanna hear that noise again, I do. Here's the rear. There it goes. I say, I think I have to go a little bit more, but popped right in. All right, wheels are set up as tubeless. So as you can see, uh, the, the tire is seated up really well and they've been sitting overnight and have not lost any air whatsoever. And let me just say, I don't, th I don't think I said this when I was shooting that video yesterday, building up the bike, but these tires really, really lock into the rims. And I'm going to say they lock in more firm than the stands wheels. Um, when I was getting the tubes out, uh, I had to, once I deflated the tire, I had to push like crazy to unseat the bead from the rim. It was just really locked in there. So, uh, you know, these, these rims so far are just from, you know, putting them together and, and airing them up. Uh, so far, so good. They felt great uh, riding around the parking lot, but obviously when I give my ride report on these, I'm going to comment on how they feel in comparison to the Stan's Valors 
that I have on my uh, Anthem, uh, my Anthem cross country bike. So the only thing that I've done, uh, other than changing the uh, the wheels to tubeless, taking out the tubes and adding the, the tape, is I just swapped out the grips. I, I like the giant grips, um, but I've been using these uh, lizard skins, and so I wanted to stick with these and. Uh, I put these and I actually had these grips on my other trance so I just swapped them over and just added a carbon water bottle cage. I use a side mount on this bike because the triangle is small and it's kind of hard to get a bottle in and out so I had picked up this carbon cage. Now I will say that this triangle is bigger than my 2014. My 2014 I could not put a standard size water bottle. It would hit the top tube and so uh, they have made the triangle bigger which I really appreciate. Now this cage uh, is one that you can drop down lower. It's got some holes that you can uh, drop the cage as low as you can. Uh, so that helps. But the, uh, the a standard water bottle does not hit the bottom of the top tube, which is really nice. So I'll go over the component spec. And you know, you can you can read on Giant's websites the specs, but it's, it's nice to see these up front. So let me start with a shock. Um, I'm really excited about riding this shock. This is a higher volume shock. And the newer Fox stuff um, whereas you used to adjust the pro pedal type setting on a uh, on the middle setting, the new ones you actually adjust the pro pedal on the open position. So this is fully open, and then it's got a one, two, and three here that you can adjust, and you can set how firm or plush that open setting is. And I'm going to leave it on one when I first start riding this thing, uh, but we'll see how that goes. And then of course all the way over here is locked out. Now I have not ridden this bike other than sprinting with a big smile around, on my face around the neighborhood uh, but uh, it, over here is is pretty firm it's it's almost fully locked out as was well my 2014 Trans. So again the middle is a kind of a pro pedal setting and all the way over is going to be open and again you can adjust that setting as a one two or three in terms of firmness one being the most plush three being the firmest in that open setting. Another thing that I really appreciate about the build on this bike is the fact that it comes with a 34 millimeter stanchion fork as opposed to the 32 talus that I had on my 2014. And this is not a talus, this is a standard float. So I'm curious to see how I like having a fork that does not have the travel adjust like the talus. I've used the uh, talus fork on my last few trail bikes and this will be the first trail bike that I've owned that has a fixed travel at 140. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but it's going to be stiffer, which is really nice. And this has the Kashima coating, by the way, on the uh, the front fork and the rear shock. So uh, you know, again, this is just like this is like a dream build bike for me. Um, so this front fork, uh, just like the rear shock, you adjust the firmness uh, by the uh, middle dial here, and you're adjusting the open mode. So this will be fully open. Uh, that would be more of a pro pedal type firmer. Uh, setting and then that's locked out. So again in the open mode you can adjust the firmness, which is really cool uh, We'll see how that goes. The next highlight on this bike is the Shimano 1x11 Drivetrain. Now I've ha had a 1x10 on my Anthem for a couple years and I use a race face not the Shimano So I've never used the Shimano 1x. On my Anthem I've dropped the chain two times in its career, and which is pretty good uh, However, the second time I bent the chain so We'll see how this XT works in comparison to the race face narrow wide, um, but it is the Shadow Plus, and I actually found the newer XT. It's a little bit easier to activate that lever for the Shadow Plus. So again, uh, if you are not familiar with Shadow Plus, uh, that's open. So to get the rear wheel off, it it kind of frees up the cage a little bit, and then it firms up the tension on the derailleur cage, so you get less chain slap. And uh, the new XT stuff is really nice. It's just got a lot of little details um, that they've really improved. For example, it's got some texture here on the shifters and also inside the brake levers. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's got just some texture here uh, that's really nice. Um, also, I, I thought was really cool is the lever, you can get the, the levers off the bike without removing the grips. And what you do is you loosen the bolt here and then it's got a little thing here that says push to open. So um, if you're trying to get the lever completely off the bike, the brake lever, uh, you can remove the screw and it'll only open up a little bit. And then if you want to completely release it, you can push uh, something small in here like a little Allen wrench and it'll release 
the top mechanism so that the, you can just pull the lever completely off the bike again without having to remove the grip so that is a really nice feature again just little details that Shimano keeps improving on their components so while I'm talking about the drivetrain this does come with the 11 speed cassette that goes from 11 up to a 42 so a massive spread I've never used a 42 back um, you know it, there's there's two ways of looking at it one is the, just the simplicity of having no front derailleur uh, no front shifter and so lightening up the bike a little bit however you are adding a cog in the back the 42 that is bigger than a front chain ring would be so you're still not really reducing rotational weight in fact you're adding rotational weight on a wheel but again the payoff is a little bit lighter of a bike uh, probably without the front derailleur and front shifter and just the simplicity uh, you're taking a little bit of thinking out in that you're only using one shifter so when I give my ride report I'm going to comment on that after using a trance that's been a 2 by 10 for a couple of years so this has the giant dropper seat post and this is the lever here and I'll go ahead and push it down and show you the, the action on it so I've got the saddle down and you can kind of really modulate this if you're if you use a light touch so I can make this come up slowly by holding it down lightly or I could just let it all the way down and make it pop up now the the one on my 2014 trans has held up pretty well it did have a little bit just slightly side to side movement uh, but you know you any dropper seat post you're gonna have just a little bit of movement uh, but I you know overall it's held up really well and I, I didn't have any hesitation at all uh, getting one getting a bike with, with another one on it so um, now while I'm up here this saddle um, looks really good I'm gonna comment on the comfort of this saddle when I give my ride report but it's got a really narrow profile and uh, you know it, it looks like a great saddle um, I, I have really enjoyed the giant saddle that I had on my 2014 trance and uh, this one's just got a slimmer profile it's most likely lighter so again I'll give the uh, the comment on the comfort of this after putting some miles on it now I will say you know you can see that this cable is really long um, I, I had to trim it down some when I was installing it but I left it long because I have the seat post kind of far down inside the frame this is a medium I'm 5 8 and a half and the medium Giants fit me really well but the, the seat post is down in there and if if I have to lift up the seat post I've got to feed the cable a little bit down inside uh, to give it some slack to pull the seat post out uh, in fact so much so that the cable is pretty tight when I feed it all the way down when I'm getting the seat post out so I actually had to leave this a little long um, I may trim it down a little bit more because it sticks way out there the cockpit of this bike is the same as my 2014 trance and that's a good thing I, I, that's it's got a 70 millimeter stem with an 8 degree rise the bar is 730 millimeters wide they're, they're both aluminum so I believe I believe this is an aluminum bar I don't, I'm tapping on it and it definitely seems like aluminum I didn't I didn't look at the specs exactly but um, again it's it's the same cockpit uh, stem length and bar width as my other trance so I'm really used to that and I did not trim the bar down uh, the 730 bar is a really good width for a trail bike not too wide not too narrow I just have to say that Shimano XT brakes are among my favorite in cross country and trail bike applications I have them on my cross country bike love them on my previous trance so I'm not paid by Shimano I just really appreciate the quality of their components adjustable brake lever so you can move the brake lever in and out the fluid reservoir on these is getting pretty low profile uh, these use mineral oil not uh, DOT fluid which is nice it doesn't cause corrosion if they get on your paint and it's not toxic on your hands so again just love the Shimano brakes this bike just like my previous trance comes with a 180 front rotor and a 160 rear which is exactly how I would spec a bike it does not come with the pads that have the cooling fins on it but uh, when I replace the pads I will probably get those kinds uh, I think they they're a little bit heavier but they do cool the pads better on a long descent I didn't show this before but you could see it but I you know I love KMC chains and this has a KMC X11 and it's black which I think is really cool 
so uh, KM chain, KMC chains last a very long time. I've had the best success with KMC compared to SRAM and Shimano. So like I said, I mean, if I built up a bike, uh, this is exactly how, how I would have built it. I probably would have put on a, a pair of stands wheels just because I'm familiar with them. But, you know, maybe my opinion will change after riding these giant carbon wheels. And these are, these wheels, the only downside initially on paper is I think they're a little bit heavier than the stands trail uh, carbon wheels. But other than that, uh, these are really a, uh, a good wheel. The tires are a Schwalbe Knobby Nick. And again, this is what I had on my previous trance, so I'm familiar with these. I like the tires a lot. Some people say that Schwalbe's are not as durable as others, for example, Specialized or Maxxis. However, I've had the stock ones on my trance. Now, my, my previous trance didn't get a ton of miles like some of my other bikes. Uh, but they lasted pretty good. I did actually change the rear tire when I sold the bike because it, the sidewall was wearing out. Now these have the, uh, they're tubeless ready and they have the snake skin, um, which I think makes for a firmer sidewall. Uh, my other ones did not have that. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll see how that goes. Again, I'll give my comments on it after a, a long term, kind of show you guys how the tr uh, tread is wearing and the sidewalls look. Um, but my previous ones were getting some, th you could see some threads on the sidewalls, which is pretty common uh, after a year on a set of tires. Um, but I think these are going to last a little bit longer. And of course, being the Trance Advanced, this is a carbon frame. Now, the front triangle on these, for those of you who don't know, is carbon. The rear triangle is not. So the seat stays and the chain stays are actually aluminum. Uh, and the, the front triangle is the, the part that can get a lot of flex when cornering hard. So um, this should stiffen up the ride. This will be my first carbon trail bike. I've owned several carbon cross-country bikes, but none in the trail bike applic application where I'm going to be bombing descents and hitting some pretty rough stuff and hitting some corners pretty hard. So um, I will let you know my comments on how the carbon feels. Now, after switching to the carbon wheels on my Anthem, I will say that the the ride quality on my Anthem greatly improved, which shows me that I think wheel stiffness is more important than frame stiffness because aluminum frames have some pretty thick tubes and they can get pretty stiff. I mean, aluminum is not a flexy material as, for example, steel would be. Uh, so you can still get a pretty stiff frame with aluminum. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, you can, everything on a bike can be stiff. You can have really thick stanchion tubes on your fork. You can have a carbon frame. You can have a 15 QR, which by the way, this does have a 15 QR. And it also comes with a 142 by 12 rear, which is nice. I had to convert my 2014 because it came with a 135. But back to what I was saying is you can have all these things that make a bike stiff, but if your wheels flex, uh, you know, it's kind of a moot point because uh, that's where the initial flex is going to come into a bike. So this bike kind of puts it all together with carbon wheels, uh, thicker axles, wider axles, and a carbon frame. And so I'm really stoked to see how this rides again in really rough stuff and on fast ascents. Now I just have to say, because I know I'm going to get a ton of comments on this, because uh, not everybody who watches my videos has seen all the ones on my channel, but this is my now infamous homemade chainstay protector. This bike does come with a pretty nice uh, chainstay protector. It's kind of the rubber kind that is uh, onto the frame. Um, I always put this over because I can extend it a little bit further down this way by the bottom bracket, a little bit further this way. Um, I know it's ugly. Uh, it's not for everyone. Uh, but if you're interested in how I do this, I made a video. It's real simple, just some zip ties and an old inner tube that's cut up. But again, I do that because I'm anal about keeping my bikes meticulous. And this just adds another layer of protection to my chainstay to protect it from all that chain slap that's gonna happen when I'm bombing rough trails. And this frame does come with a protector underneath the down tube, uh, which is nice. However, it's kind of an adhesive and the edges were actually coming up when I got the bike and you can see it here. Uh, I'm, I'm actually probably going to take a hairdryer to it, heat it up, just to make sure it sticks really well on the frame. 
Um, I don't think I'll have any problems, but of course if I do, then I will report back. And the last thing I want to point out is that the cable routing on this bike is top notch. Uh, you know, this is the, the dropper seat post, so it's going to run internally going in here on the down tube, comes all the way up, never comes out again, and goes to the bottom of the seat post. And so that's nice. And then over here on this side, you've got your rear brake and rear derailleur cable going into the frame. The rear brake will come out here just below the water bottle cage and then stay out and goes all the way to the rear brake. And then the rear derailleur cable, let me jump under, under here and show you where that comes out. It just comes out down here and then it too stays external all the way to the rear derailleur. And it's got bosses that are covered up by my chainstay protector here, but it's got bosses uh, where you just use the plastic clips to hold the cable on. If you're getting this frame as a frame only, uh, these are really easy to build. I built up my Anthem from scratch and ran the cables. These plugs will come out, so it's got kind of a big hole and you would just kind of run the plugs along the cable. So it's really easy to drop these down inside the frame and fish them out uh, because again, the slots are bigger. And so again, uh, I think Giant did a good job with the cable routing. If you've ever had a bike that's had wonky cable routing, you will appreciate something like this that's pretty simple. So that's gonna wrap it up with this first look at the 2016 Trans Advanced 2751. And I will follow this up in a few weeks with my first impressions of the ride characteristics and then follow that up with at least one or two more videos as more of a long-term report. Thanks for watching.